video will show you how to solve radical equations. Your directions on radical equations will say solve and check. We should check every equation, but it's really imperative that we check the radical equations. And you'll see why in a little bit. If we have the square root of x equals 6, to undo this square root, we're going to do the opposite. And the opposite of square root is to square both sides. So we show a squaring of both sides. The reason this is a good idea is because the square root and the square cancel each other out, and all we get is x equals 36. Now to check this is pretty easy. We're just going to put 36 in for that x, and we're looking at the square root of 36. Does that equal 6? The answer is yes. It checks. So that is our solution for this equation. And that was a pretty easy equation because it was just x under the square root. But the process is going to be the same no matter how complicated the radical is. So square root of x plus 4 equals 3. To undo the square root, let's do the opposite, which is square both sides. The square root and the square cancel out, and all we're left with is just the x plus 4. We have to do this arithmetic over here. Plain old simple one-step equation, subtract 4 from both sides, and we get x equals 5. To check this, we're going to put 5 in place of this x. So you're looking at the square root of 5 plus 4, which is 9. The square root of 9 is 3, so it checks. x equals 5 is our solution. Square root of d equals negative 6. To undo that square root, let's square both sides. Square root of d squared, we know it's just d. Negative 6 is 36. Well, let's plug 36 in for this d and check. This is the square root of 36 equal to negative 6. And that is a big fat no. The square root of something does not equal a negative number. So here we did the process correctly. We got an answer that does not check. That means this answer gets thrown out, and our answer is actually no solution. Now, you should be able to recognize from the beginning that this is going to be no solution. The square root of something cannot equal a negative. So you automatically are going to be able to say no solution on this kind of problem. So if you recognize square root equal to a negative, you may just say no solution right off the bat. Square root of something, to undo that square root, we do the opposite, which is square both sides. This square root and this square cancel out, and all we're going to be left with is this x squared minus 5. The right side is just 4 from squaring the 2. Here I have two options for solving. What I've chosen to do is to add 5 to both sides, which is going to give me x squared equals 9. This is x squared. To undo squared, we do the opposite, which is take the square root of both sides. Remember, when you solve an equation like this by taking the square root of both sides, you pick up a plus or minus in your solution. So right now we have two solutions. We're going to have to check to see if they work. If I put either 3 or negative 3 in here and square it, anything squared is positive. So 3 squared or negative 3 squared is going to give me 9. So this is the square root of 9 minus 5. We want to know if it equals 2. 9 minus 5 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So they both check. And the reason they both check is that anything squared comes out positive. This looks more complicated, but it really is not. It's the square root on both sides, and that's okay. We want to undo the square root, so we're going to do the opposite, which is square both sides. Square root of and squared cancel out. All we're going to get is the x plus 4. Same thing happens over here. So we just have this simple equation. x plus 4 equals 3x minus 2. We need to get our x's together, so I subtract x from both sides, which gives me this. Then I want to add 2 to both sides. Now I have 2x equals 6. Divide both sides by 2 and x equals 3. We still need to check. I need to put 3 here and put 3 here. So 3 plus 4 is 7. This is the square root of 7 on the left side. On the right side, 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. The square root of 7 does equal the square root of 7, so it checks. Looking more complicated because it's a trinomial under the square root, but it doesn't matter. It's the square root of something. To undo square root, do the opposite, which is square both sides. This left side is pretty easy. Square root of whatever squared is just going to give me this. This is the side we need to think about. This is the binomial 1 plus x squared. That means we need to write out 1 plus x times 1 plus x. That's what a binomial squared means, to write it out twice and then FOIL this out, and this is what we end up with. Because if you FOIL, let me get rid of that, and write 1 plus x right here. 1 times 1 is 1, 
this is a positive x, this is another positive x, that's how we get the 2x in the middle, x times x is x squared. So now I see x squared on both sides, so I will subtract x squared from both sides, which just makes those cancel out. So you are left with a very easy equation to solve. Let's add 10x to both sides, which gives us this, subtract 1 from both sides, and then divide both sides by 12, and we get x equals negative 1. We do need to check that in parentheses squared because we are squaring this whole quantity of x. Do the arithmetic on that gives us a positive 1 here. Ten, negative 10 times negative 1 is positive 10, then minus the 11. Add this up inside here, you're looking at 0. And of course, the square root of 0 just equals 0. That tells us that x equals negative 1 is the solution to our equation. All right, notice this square root stops right here plus this 3. We're going to need to square both sides to get rid of this radical. One important rule is that we want to have this square root all by itself before we square. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, which is how we get this 2x minus 3 over here. Now it looks like the problem we just did. To undo the square root, let's square both sides. Over here, square root of whatever squared is just this part's going to be popping out on the left side. Over here, I need to think about this being 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3, and then FOIL that out. And when you FOIL that out, you're going to get this on the next line. Because there's an x squared in the problem, then we know we need everything piled up on one side equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 3x and subtract 13 from both sides. Putting this together over here, I have 4x squared minus 15x minus 4. Our strategy on solving this kind of equation is to factor. When you have x squared equal to 0, one of the ways to go is to factor. Of course, you could also use the quadratic formula if you'd rather, but this does factor like this. Since it's equal to 0, the 0 products property says I can set that equal to 0. I can set that equal to 0, which is this step. Simple to solve. Subtract 1 from both sides. Gives me this. Divide by 4. And I think one of my solutions is x equals negative 1 fourth. Just add 4 to both sides and we get x equals 4. So it appears we have two solutions to this equation. But to know for sure, we're going to have to check. It was negative 1 fourth. We're going to put that here and put that here. And this is what it looks like after I've stuffed it in. I'm not going to do this side on this case because I notice something right here. If I do 2 times negative 1 fourth, I'm going to get negative 1 half. This is the square root of something plus a number equal to a negative. That's not possible. So without taking time to work this out, this just absolutely cannot work. That says x equals negative 1 fourth is not one of my solutions. But when I check x equals 4, put 4 here, and here we have this. Do the arithmetic inside the radical. 3 times 4 is 12. Add this up is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. That works. So the only solution we have is x equals 4. This x equals negative 1 fourth is what's called an extraneous solution. It's really not a solution at all. It's something we picked up because we squared both sides. It doesn't work. It gets thrown out. So we only have the one solution. We can do these radical equations with cube root or fourth root or fifth root. It really doesn't matter. What you have to look at is what's been done. This is the cube root. To undo cube root, you're going to do the opposite, which is cube both sides. Cube root of this raised to the third power is just going to give me 2 plus 5x. 3 cubed means 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. You're looking at a plain old simple equation right there. Subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 5, and x equals 5. And let's check. I put the 5 in right here, and you're looking at this. Do inside the radical there. 5 times 5 is 25. Add that up as 27. The cube root of 27 is 3, so x equals 5 is your solution. Here are the steps for solving a radical equation. Number one, isolate the radical on one side of the equation. If you have two radicals, then they should be on opposite sides of the equal sign. Then you want to raise both sides of the equation to the power corresponding to the index of the radical, meaning if it was square root, you squared both sides. If it was cube root, you cubed both sides, etc. Number three, if the equation still contains a radical, repeat steps one and two. Or solve the equation after all of the radicals have been eliminated. You could have a simple equation, get x's to one side, numbers to the other. You might have a quadratic equation left that you would have to either factor or use the quadratic formula on. And number five, be sure to check your solutions in the original equation.